Now let's look at some of the advanced editing features in Xcode. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the code completion features. As I do this, I'm going to make some mistakes and I'm going to pause. What I'm going to try to do is to come down here and I'm going to retype this method. It's going to be a duplicate method, but I'm going to type that in fairly slowly and I'll let you see how Xcode is following along with me. Notice I'm not building the code. I'm not compiling anything to get these warnings and errors. This is happening as I'm typing. There is a slight delay in some cases as it is parsing, but you don't have to worry about that in most cases because even if there's a delay of a second or so before the warning or error message comes up, you will see it and you'll be right there on the spot where you can address it. So I'm going to type in this code again and you will see the mistakes that I make as I make them, and you'll probably see them even before Xcode spots them. But this is the only way I know to show you how Xcode is looking out for you and what it's going to alert you with. And of course, as you are typing along and making these mistakes yourself, it will always be a surprise to you that you've made a mistake because we usually don't intend to make mistakes, although I'm trying to do that right now. So I'm going to type in this code again, and I'll type it in fairly slowly. Notice as I typed that, I'll come back here. I'm going to put the closing parenthesis in and watch what happens with the highlighting of the opening parenthesis. Notice that it shows me the balancing parenthesis or bracket as I'm typing, so you can see exactly what you're enclosing. Now, I've also got an error here. It's telling me right away that it expected an identifier or a slash. Well, actually, that's not what it expected. So it's found something. This is the same basic thing as the problem with unbalanced brackets and unbalanced quotes. It found an error. You can see the error is on void here, the little brown arrow. The error is actually that I left out the indicator of whether this is an instance or a class. As I'm typing, notice that Xcode is trying to complete my code for me. So I'll back up here, get rid of that, and I'll type very slowly. And these are all of the known symbols in my project that I might be trying to type. As I type a few more letters, and notice I have the dimmed letters here, as I type a few more letters, this list gets shorter and shorter. And what I wanted to do is did receive memory warning. And if I just want to go with that, if that's one of the choices that I want, I can just go there and press return and it's already inserted there. However, it's a duplicate declaration. So it gave me choices that I could use, but sometimes those choices aren't the ones that I want. So here I have a duplicate declaration. I'm going to change its name so it's no longer a duplicate. And I'm missing the bracket at the end here because I don't have anything for the body. I'll type the opening bracket. And as soon as I press return, I've got the closing bracket properly aligned. And if you notice, I'll come down here and erase this bracket. And again, watch the location where the closing bracket is going to be placed and watch what happens as I press return. It highlights the paired bracket, no matter where it is. And when I'm typing ahead for the first time, I'll do the opening one. I get by default an indented section here and the closing bracket in the default place for it. And again, the highlighting of the paired brackets. So now I've got the body of what I want put in here. I can put in an int declaration up here. And right away, as I declare something, I automatically get a warning that it's not used. Well, it can't be. I only typed one line of code. And now I lose the warning. But every time you type a declaration, you'll get a warning that it's not used until you actually use it. Because maybe you want to have these around. These are declarations that you're going to need later on. But right there, at that moment, it's a warning for you to consider. Let me take this line of code out. So I will now regenerate that warning. And often what people do as they are coding is to look 
at the issue navigator over here because you can see this warning message over here shows up over here. The unused variable is I. So if you are generating error messages in other files as you are working in this file, this can be very helpful because I find for the way I work, it's useful to get rid of as many warnings as possible as soon as possible. Because otherwise, when you get finished with a project, you may have 20 warnings all over the project and you've got to track them all down. Nothing prevents you from finishing a project and leaving warning messages in. But it's a good idea not to because they may come back and harm you in the future.